Welcome to HQ Live. I'm Vicki Hoth and this is Marie Eldridge and we are so excited today to show you so many holiday ideas. Holiday to me means starting in September, Bye. going all the way to January, right? At least. So we have lots of fun <laughs> ideas. Even though maybe you'll see this after Halloween, you'll get a couple of Halloween ideas as well. So Marie, let's get started. We have a pile of fun things that we've been working on. We do. Over. And first we're going to start with that trick-or-treat bag. So this is just, I laid the fabric out on the long arm and quilted lines. I added this little colored section on and then this is just a panel from a cheater quilt. That you just laid on top of it. Laid on top I of see it. Raw yeah, edges. Raw edge. I just stitched that down with the long arm. And then what I did was I left this end open and put a little extra uh, batting inside Something there. So Trapunto. The, Trapunto. So look at her little and her hat's puffy. The little cat's got some body to him. And then I took it off and made it into the bag, which then I could also add on a pocket so and a zipper. So you say this is a trick-or-treat bag. So this is for my favorite candies. And then this is for Well, this is my stuff. Okay, so, <laughs> so show them how to do that. We got a little Christmas. When you say the Trapunto, yes, this is one we showed in one of our other uh, HQ holiday webinars that we did is to take a panel uh, we, uh, we have a piece of fabric laid extra batting underneath this to give it just that little pop just the shape of that mm -hmm. snowman just stitch around and then do a really wiggle stitch around that and it makes a really cute pillow so you see that dimension of this snowman, and this has the cute grid in it, so quilting that, and then raw edge, and just squiggle quilt, and what a fast, easy pillow for any holiday, any holiday. You could just yes. look. I love it. Yeah. It gives it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's so fun. That's that one. Oh, you're putting them over there. I'm putting them over here. Okay. okay we're just got piles. Okay. okay. So Halloween still. Halloween. I love, love, love this quilt. <laughs> it is so cute. So you just quilt the quilt, and then after you're done with your quilt, add these little spider webs. See, even border. Just add a little show. So today you're going to see one thing quite a bit and that's half square triangles. Is the of half square triangles. And well behind us, behind you Marie, yes. is all half square triangles depending on how it's laid out makes that beautiful quilt and then uh, the thread choices that was something this is Heidi's quilt from our marketing department made it for a family member and we colored <laughs> and we came up with I'm not even uh, sure if you got it in your hand which one we used but it may still be on the machine it probably is the funny thing was is that we put out all of these colors and then we had different people in the studio all of us educators each pick one nobody knew what the others chose and we all picked the same, same color. color and it's right it's an irrigated color and it beautiful all rust orange red color and it gives such a beautiful uh, pattern over because it's edge to edge yeah just yeah. over the whole quilt and it doesn't you know I sometimes oh my gosh that thread's gonna scream in the light color but what it does is it gives it a beautiful texture yes we all want this quilt oh yeah <laughs> we all want to take it home I wanted to share it with you but 
the thing that I originally was talking about is that is all square triangles that she just how she laid it out and she made that pattern pattern she just put it together like that and that's what she got so anybody can do it and there the same go. thing with this yep, yep. the half square triangle so fun fun quilt okay. ideas all right moving on all right so this is just a plain piece of fabric no piecing at all and yet you use one of our fun rulers a wave ruler and then just do a freehand pumpkin the deeper the wave the more more open space you get in here right right but beautiful it just is just so cute okay all right all right this quilt again half square triangle. that's square all triangles. half square row get the but. chevron and then i used my mini circle ruler have i got that there we go mini circle ruler we'll even bring up a brand new one so you can see the way it looks the mini circle ruler the smallest hole circle and just get these little circles in here and then to get my spacing and i've got some i'm bringing this up here to get my spacing i used echo feet i'm bringing them up so the echo feet give that distance against your ruler so it's a perfect spacing to go across there so I've got a three three or a uh, three eighths inch <laughs> a half inch and a three quarter inch and I think I used on this one the half inch I really really like the half inch because it gives me a good spacing good negative space to define another area so easy to do just Rotate those half square okay, triangles. See that texture on there? Oh, it's just so cute. I love fall colors. Oh. All right. All right. Move those aside. Okay, Marie. I know we've showed this a couple of years ago, but let's talk again this piping. Yeah, the piping. That's what I love because it was so easy. So this is just couching regular old yarn. So you just take the yarn from uh, and put it through your couching foot, run it right along that edge and it just sets that off so pretty. So much easier than doing all that piping oh, that you yeah. have to fold yeah. and put a cord in. And so it you, does, it accents And it. we'll demonstrate that couching for you. But these are just some AccuCut quilt or uh, quilt shapes designs. that we cut mm -hmm. out with the leaf and then just stitched them down with the thread that glued them on and stitched them down and it was really quick. Easy so way to anything applicate. quick I'm, mm -hmm. I'm all about, right? Okay, another one, the same thing. Uh, this was another one that we showed, but it's just such a cute grid from the Pro Stitcher and then these cute little can or, um, yep. candy corns. Candy corns. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and, and then just squiggle around it. So that's the applique is you know, just we to squiggle around and travel over. You know, so many times we think we have to put heat and bond or some type of adhesive on the back of these, but you didn't, did you? No. You just, just made that and laid it down and just held it down. and Held it down with a glue stick, yes. Yeah. So glued it down and then stitched around it. Okay. All right. Now tell me about, this doesn't look East, or it doesn't look <laughs> Halloween or Thanksgiving, <laughs> but it looks pretty fall, fall Fall. So the thing I love about this quilt was this was when I was first learning, and people always said, don't, you know, do feathers on a real quilt when you're learning because you don't want to make mistakes. And I thought, well, that's where I want to do them is where they don't really show very much. Okay. <laughs> so I did them in the border so that... I could practice, but you do, you try harder when it's on a real quilt. And so there's feathers in the border and this busy print, so they don't show as much, but I still love the texture and, and it was but a I good But I noticed learning. you weren't too afraid because you put a light backing. I did put a light back, but you can also see that I changed my thread color to match whatever was on the front. Okay. All right. I love this grid that you've got in the sashing of this how did you did you mark this i out? just marked it so that's a two inch uh strip 
Okay. So every one is a half inch, and then you just kind of have to wiggle back and forth in each square. And so you, you get just that. wiggle from one and then move to another. So did you do your grid first and then go back and put your the fill in? Yes. Okay. So then you could travel. Yep. Okay. Travel good really idea. Quick. Good, good. Okay. Oh, here comes a favorite quilt. You <laughs> are going to love this because why? We have a pattern for you. So this is one I that I just made and it is today. <laughs> so you can download this, but it's just so, oh, I fall just calls to me. So, so we should let the camera see this whole, the whole quilt. So oh, that, so. Because we have it folded, but this is what the whole quilt, and you get this pattern today for watching us. <laughs> so my favorite by part about that, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. by Marie. So. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> my favorite is how this turned out. So when I started, I made up the pattern myself, and I made this into half square triangles again. Half square triangles, but I left this block so that the little stem was going to be over here. And then when I started putting my leaf together, I was like, that's not right. So then I ended up with this great little corner here, and a great little corner here, and a great little corner here. So, you know, sometimes you can plan for things to happen, and sometimes <laughs> they're better when they just happen. And then I just like free hand, free hand little pumpkins. So this is just kind of a fun, easy. Did you use the circle rulers for this? I did. They're perfect yeah. circles. I yeah. thought you so. might have. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, I gotta use the ruler. Okay. All right. So, what's what have you got here? I can see you like treats and treats and treats. Okay. So, <laughs> of course, for Halloween you would have trick and treat, but we're past Halloween, so uh, we have treat on the mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, the <laughs> so you can see we have a couple of pillows. You want to grab our pillows? I don't know if I you can do. see them back there. I just so want to bring them forward. All right. So we're going to kind of demonstrate how to do this pillow, the one that has the spider web on it. And also you can see this would have been really good if this said trick, but it says treat again. Yeah, or if that <laughs> you said could trick. do if that did. You needed some but chocolate, didn't you? We we needed some chocolate that day. Yeah, lots That's of treats. Right. We're all That's about right. the treats. All right. So I see what you've done first though is you went through just put out your black fabric and you have black batting. Why would you do black batting? I wanted black batting so that it, it when I did my stitching it wouldn't come through with the white, especially okay. on the back. But also you just don't want to take that chance with the stitching that it's going to come back up with that needle and really it looks so nice. It so looks this has so a sharp. really fun background feel, kind of like teeth, Halloween teeth or pumpkin teeth, right? Is that what or, it looks yeah, like to me? Yeah. And so you've got that as a background and then you're going to use your couching, your couching feet. I'm going to use the couching feet which we have a new product that's just been released a for you, product. a revised product. So the couching feet are going to look a little bit different. You're going to love them. They have color. And quilters were all about color, right? So this is just the orange yarn that we used for the trick or treat thing, or just the treat and treat thing. Okay. And these are what our new feet look like. You can see they're color coordinated. They have little the colors. Do you have the I blue one the on? Other one. So there's a blue one that goes with it. So there you go. So you're going to show how to do this I'm with the show. spider web. Okay, so you've placed the medium size of the couching foot on, that which is the pink one or the red. Pink. Which, pink? We're is pink. it pink? We're okay. Pink. We're going with pink. Uh, all right. And so I notice you've got your ruler base on because you're using rulers. So tell me what you're going to do now. So the first thing I want to do is show you how to pull up the thread. So when I do couching, first I will bring up and just kind of do a little tie off so that that's secure and then just drop my needle so I can get everything ready. All right, so I'm going to take my piece of yarn okay. that I'm going to couch with. I'm just going to drop it around that behind the needle and between the hopping foot and then I'm just going to pull that thread that I just stitched so that I can hold this out and then when I put the needle down, down and up, and up, 
then I can let go of the yarn and I can just pull it through. Oh, now okay. if you have two strands and they go through there easily, you know you have the right size. If you're wrestling with it trying to pull it through, then your hopping foot or your couching foot is the wrong size. So I'm just going to kind of tack that down. So you just lassoed that in there and pulled it through. I just lassoed it and now I just want my uh, yarn to just lay loose on my quilt. Okay, okay, so kind of just puddle there. Just kind of puddle. All right, I'll keep an eye on this. And you make sure it stays loose. Mm -hmm, I and will. And we'll just do a little... Okay, so I'm just going down. So it, cause it gets a double back. yarn. It gets a double on the... on some of them. How about that? And down on this one. And back. Oh, look how cute that's going to be. Man, I'd hate to get caught in that web. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we'll just do down again. Whoops, got off the ruler. All right, so now, of course, we could keep going, and I'd probably make them different sizes, but we'll just do okay. the inside of this, okay? So we're just going to go in. Ooh, i got to keep up with my job back down here and across. Just do a little curve there. Back to the top. And there's oh, the start cute. of our cute little spider web, oh right? Gosh. Yes. Goes with our trick or treat. <laughs> cute, <laughs> or our treat cute and treat. pillows. Uh, yeah, treat and treat. <laughs> but it's such a cute pillow or a handy, or a bag. Or bag. A Halloween bag. Or, yes, there's lots of things you could do it. Speaking of lots of things you can do, we have some other uh, little items that we've made that we want to show you. So That's right, like mug rugs or hot pads that are candy canes. So candy corn. Candy cane, corn. yes, that's, that's Christmas. <laughs> We're almost uh, there. Candy so, corn. So we have the candy corns, which could be a hot pad. You could make them bigger for a centerpiece. So you I'm actually going to go steal one and bring it up here. So I can see that it's been quilted, and of course it's black, but that's okay. And you'd use... If but this, this was on the long arm, so I just did strips of fabric. So you're go we're going to demonstrate that a little bit. We're going to do some strip okay. quilting. But the thing that was good about this, or the thing I learned about it, tips, are uh, I think I would put something so it's not so flimsy. So some other ones I put like some stabilizer or interface in. So if this is a hot pad though, you could use the the interfacing or the fleece. What's or the thermal. Thermal, kinda, yes, so yeah. that makes it really nice. Yeah. And that would maybe two layers of that, would you? Yeah, sure. Depending so. on what you're going to use it for. If it's just for a little decoration, you're good. Mm -hmm. But Definitely on this, you want to do your uh, binding, cut it on the bias. Okay, so around. you're going to show how to do this later because this is pieced, on, strip pieced on uh, the Pieced and quilted on the long arm, right. Okay, so here's our leaf. And you can see after you've done the strip piecing with some thread. that this was cut on an angle. So that kind of adds a little to Okay, it. and okay. then the same thing with your bias. Yep and leave a little hook there for to hang it on. To hang it. So you can kind of see how it starts out. Okay. And you start out with your piece right there. Man, yeah. that's fast. So Put a whole bunch of those on and strips. Do your strips and then you can cut your, your shape leaves, afterwards. Your shape. And we do have a pattern for that that will be available as well. And then you just do your, your binding, your binding, binding, binding around, it, around it. And that's cute. And you can see on the wall, we've done another strip piecing. This is the fall um, pumpkins. The fall wall hanging, which I love that. And then you've left it raw edge around it. Everything's raw edge. And it is really raw. So even the leaves were just, they're not cut rounded. They're just chunks. And then you quilt them how you want. You add a little bit of twigs in there and but some curls. But first of all, you did a background fill on the quilt, on the on just a piece of fabric. And then you added everything else onto it and then and then the detail with all that fun just stitching. Yeah. So and it freehand. Was, yeah. That's so awesome. I think the trick is is to use your long arm to get your background quilting and then you can have fun with embellish it with everything you want. 
Okay, well next, we're going to move on to Christmas, and we have some fun Christmas ideas for you. All right, we're ready for Christmas. We have so many fun decorations. I have Carrie with me, one of my studio educators, oh, and yeah. we are ready to are. Show, show off some fun things. Now, yes. in our holiday uh, webinar before, we showed some of these things. We're just going to kind of re reinvent them, relive them again, because they're so fun, fun. This was all done, this pillow was all done on the long arm with the couching thread, and this is just a fun little couching thread with a Pro Stitcher, Pro -Stitcher. design. This is actually a design from uh, Wasatch Quilting Designs, and just the rickrack was put on it, everything was done. Maybe I did this on the sewing machine. Yeah but really fun to do. Okay, Carrie, you did this one in our other event. And this was a fast, easy strip strip quilting way to do it. I just laid out different strips of cloth. So across. you folded them in half. What's the width? Two and a half? Probably. Was it like a, a jelly roll type? Yeah, just take that and put them in half and sew them along and you've got your pillow. Just down at whatever size you want. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted bigger strips, you could. Make bigger strips, Yeah, yes. and it's just got texture. I love that. It's a lot of fun. So, okay. Yes. All right. So you're going to talk to us about some fun little, just, I think they're darning neighborhood gifts, to tell you the truth. And they, they work up really easily and fast, and how cute is that? This one actually was, uh, made by Laurel Barris, the yes. founder of Handy Quilter. And all she did was take a, a large design, reduced it down in size, and made this as a candle holder, candle mat, but she used black batting, black fabric on the top and the back, and then there's another thread. And then she just used silver, uh, silver thread yes. and stitched out a fun design. What an easy gift. Cut out, so it's a raw edge, but it just makes a really, really nice gift. Absolutely. Okay, what about all these fun little things Isn't here? Isn't this cute? Yes. We can take something and just um, go ahead and put a, pa a design on it, put Happy Holidays. Okay, so what you did is you used your Pro Stitcher and yes. created a background design. Yes. Raw edge, just, just cut any out. Just fabric. This yep. is wool. Yep, and then we just you see how turkey jerky that is, but look how cute it makes it look. And just spell out. You can you can write. You can sign your name. You and can spell. That's right. Some cute little leaves. Now the backing or the binding. I love the bindings Isn't on that these. That's cute. And this is you know a lot of times when you're making quilts and something that that is really lasting and that you do want to do hand embroidery. I hand mean hand binding. binding. Mm -hmm. Yes, but with fast little things like that, you can just put it on your machine and let me show you how we did this. Okay. I've got Wait, it. Wait, look, before you okay. show, I want to okay. just show some of the fun ideas. So, cute, cute. Look at these. How about this? Having this, these are little mug rugs and you... That's wool. That's batting. That cute batting. Just right, right, right here too. Okay. And you could take those, put two, uh, Two packets of hot chocolate on it, wrap it up, and there's a cute okay. little gift. And the same thing again, that design. So just quilt, put uh, on fabric, quilt really, it all, yes. just back and forth, and then you can start adding little embellishments. And you can make a whole bunch at one okay. time. Okay, all right. So another one, this another is design. Now these designs that we're showing you as the background designs, they're actually in Art and Stitch. They're their creative field backgrounds, and so you can make them any size, reduce the size down, make them real dense, or, or make, make them, them bigger. Mm -hmm. yep. And the same thing, here's just some, this looks like just a, a flannel with some batting, again, right. for the little pu uh, cuff. Little table runner, or um, this would be a cute little uh, placemat. Oh, yeah, that could even be a placemat, place too. too. Put a plate right there in the center. Yep. Yeah, I know where a plate is I can put there. <laughs> a red one, too. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another idea, you know, again. The same wool. And, and you, you've made your design already on your, and you just put these on it, stitch around them, and you're done. Easy. And it's all done by machine. Right. You could, yes, every bit of this is done by machine, and you can even place the your binding, binding on by machine. Absolutely. And then take it to your regular sewing machine, turn, turn it over, over and, and stitch. stitch it. Okay, so you wanted to show how to do that. So I'm okay. going to move these aside. 
So the nice thing is, is you can just, like you said, on, when, on your machine, you can go ahead and just put your uh, one seam down on the top of your And you're quilt. hopping so it's a quarter inch, so, so you can just go right edge. along there, mm -hmm. yeah, and do press that. It, or, and then I heard you press the heck out you of it. You just press it all flat and everything, and then you turn it around and you press it like this also. You just press and press. A lot of times I will take a glue stick and just put a little piece of glue here and then iron it down and it keeps it. Because of that starch in the right, glue. Right, star it starches it down so it's flatter so that when you go and turn that over, turn that over you are going to stitch in the ditch right along this seam. Okay, so here's and one it's that's gonna done. Catch. And this is what it looks like on the back. Yep. You can. And then on the front, you'll you have a stitch in the ditch. Yeah, you don't even see yep, it. Yeah, you don't. And then it's just like that. So those that don't like hand stitching, that binding right. down, or you have a really fast project to yep, do. Yeah, you don't need to. You do not need to hand bind everything. How wide did you make your binding Two on and this? a half. Two and a half So inches. if I Open did it, because I usually do two and a quarter on mine. Gotta work. You just have to know that you have less of a flange right. here. Right. In fact, right here we have less of a flange. See, we just barely, you can hardly see it because it's a thread. Okay, yeah. But it's just right along there. And so then you don't have as much. So with placemats, if you were to do this with placemats that get washed a lot, it really would wear well. Yes. It would do well. Yes. Okay. All right. Carrie, that is awesome. Now we're going to bring Cheryl on, and she has some ideas for you for Christmas. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay, joining me now is Cheryl Duncan, my other studio educator. But before we get started with Cheryl on what you have, okay. I wanted to talk more about this quilt here. This quilt is a split nine patch, Megan May, excuse me, made by Megan Best. She's one of our uh, field educators, and this these are just uh, charm packs, just a charm pack that she used for this. And it's beautiful. But what Free a free motion Christmas quilt, yeah. Really, and it's kind of like um, kind of a table runner, or the put it at the foot of your bed. Yeah, you know, but it's really pretty. So I just wanted to give Megan credit for this because it is beautiful. It we is actually pretty. stole it from her, so but I think we'll have to return it. So <laughs> now I see under here. I see that you've got some things going on here. Christmas. Christmas. What do you need for Christmas? Well, what do I want in my stocking for Christmas? That's right. And That's I noticed right. you didn't fill mine. Nope, there's nothing in it, not even a lump of coal. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> so we decided that we wanted to quilt stockings on Minky. And after we started doing it, we thought, how fun would it be just to do the cuff of Minky with the snowflake pattern? Oh, yeah. And it just kind of makes it a little fancy. And Ooh, nice and soft. nice and yeah. soft. So there's your stocking and that cuff. So... I saw that you had taken a, just a, a piece of minky and placed it on the frame and just quilted a pattern back and forth, yep. repeated that, and, and then that's just, what you did with that. And then just cut out what I needed for it. Okay, I'm going to sneak past this one. And so this is actually the stocking, right? Yes, the stocking did out of minky. This wouldn't do very well at my house with my family. It wouldn't stay very white, but, you know, some of those formal living rooms that you see, this it's would be beautiful. really just pretty in. really striking. And the same thing, look at this. Oh, just yeah. stitch a design. Just This is just some white fabric. Add a doily to it to just class it up a little bit. And to to put that across a be fireplace. Really yeah. Yeah. Simple. Easy, easy to do. But you know what? They'd be really good gift p packages. A would. stocking. Put a bottle of, of you know, drink in it or, you know, just some fun stuff and give to a family for Christmas. That's a good idea. Yeah, so, yeah, they would fill up a lot of stuff. I would take mine filled any time you want to give it to okay, me. Okay, I'll get the coal. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, this is one thing that I, I uh, said, Cheryl, I've got this fabric. I know. <laughs> I really <laughs> gave you a hard one. I've got this fabric, and I want you to take the dotted fabric and make a, a envelope, and so that's what she did, is made an envelope, and this is the what's left of that envelope. So she just sewed a piece of white to it, right sides together, turned it, just pressed it, it, so it gave it a good, nice finished edge. Yeah. And then 
I had her quilt this following the strips and it was really hard for her. We had to cover it up. Because mm -hmm. it, made, it makes me dizzy, but it's so cute it when is. it's done. So you just followed the strips and quilted, just line quilting. We only did every other line. Because that's all you could do, right? That's right. <laughs> okay, so you followed this every other line and just quilted it. So now it's quilted, and then rather than piecing, you just added this to the top of it. Right. Stitched it down, and so you can see it's partially stitched down there. And then I would just take this and fold it, fold that edge down, and just finish stitching around there. Now you've got it like it's pieced. Yep. And then with your AccuQuilt cutter, you cut out some some holly and some berries and then just herky jerky them down just a quick easy way to get it down okay, herky jerky tell me what that is just a scribble around the edge of your so that design. it encases just so that the it raw holds edge it, holds it down okay so the camera can come in and see that close and just and we didn't even use any glue for this no just glued it down and then we'll put another one on this side and do the same thing and bind it. We have a cute little red binding that matches this and what a cute table runner to give us a gift or to put on your own table. Okay, so now Simple. we have we have some fun stuff that you're hopefully our camera is just scrolling through and seeing the pillows and the quilts and the wall hangings, all these red and green that's what Christmas is all about, red and green and bling, Can we silver start playing and gold. Christmas music now yes. in the studio? You know, we should. We should <laughs> just go out today, play Christmas music. Okay. But we haven't even had Halloween, so let's wait. Okay, so we're going to change frames here because you have a couple of ideas to show how to make some fun decorations. So we're going to change frames. We'll be right back. All right, we're back with Cheryl again. She has a couple of projects something you're actually going to show us how you did. So talk, tell me about this cute little project. So this was just, we took a piece of fabric, we put the borders on it, and put it on our backing and just quilted the background. Okay. And then once we had the background quilted, all I did was add my little strips of fabric and stitched around the edges of them, their raw edge, and we just made a simple little Christmas tree for a wall hanging. and even glued the star on because we didn't want to have to sew off the machine. <laughs> okay, so, so um, you did just using a ruler to get your straight edges here. You could do that, like you talked that herky-jerky, you could squiggly around there, whatever yep. you want to make that cute. You could add jewels to it for lines, but oh, what a cute just little simple, gift. Just a simple little project. Okay. Quick too. All right, so our last project that I think is so adorable Okay, I'm this is spread this out so that everyone can see. A fun little table runner. I actually saw it at UQSM last spring. That's in Salt Lake. It's in Salt Lake and it's just a table runner made with a 10 degree ruler. And the 10 degree ruler gives you your different shape depending on how depending on how big you want your strips. You can help. actually take the whole strip and make a Christmas tree skirt around. Oh, how cute! And just keep it in a circle. Does it just take you around? It would take you in around. Are you going to do that? Probably not, because I've got one already. Oh, okay. But what a cute idea with different strips. And what's the width there? Um, I'm not about sure. Four inches, about looks four inches. Like. About four inches, yeah. So this one is actually by So Blessed, but I know that you can get other ones from different vendors. So. Okay. Okay, so you could find that. So one thing that you can do with this is that the number of pieces that you put in determine the curve that you're going to have. So the number of pieces on a fan, that's kind of um, what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, on a fan. So if you only wanted to keep it straight, you could just do every other one and it would be straight, but still your alternating color okay. and still the different sizes. So you wouldn't have the curve in it. Yeah, so this we did six. So that's... That's three th three ideas with that same ruler that you've just oh given. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this one we did six one way and then flipped the pieces the other way. So it gave it this curve. And it's just kind of a fun little quick project. And it's all done on the machine. So you're do flip and stitch. Yes. Or stitch and flip. Stitch and flip. 
Okay. Yep. So I know you had said earlier that there was one caution about this that you needed to be careful about, and that was that you gave enough space here so that you had enough space down here. Right. So when I first did this, I kind of laid it out and tried to overlap it a little bit just so that I could see where it was going. And then I put my first one in place ready to go. Okay. So then all you have to do after that is lay your next fabric on top of it, stitch along the edge, flip it over. Okay, so do do one. I'll take everything away. We can see how fun this is. So we've got our ruler base on. So this is our first fabric in the design. And then our second fabric is the presents. I'll hold that for so you. So we're just going to take it and line it up straight. Of course, my popping foot is a quarter inch. And I actually have my shore foot on so that because you're going to use because I'm going to use my and ruler, that. and I'm going to get this positioned where I want it. Bring up my bobbin thread. So two right sides together, and then I'm just going to stitch down. Do a little tacking, and I'm just going to use my ruler to stitch along the edge. And you want that hopping foot edge to go, or the foot to go right along the edge for your quarter inch. Yep, I do. And if it's not exact, it's not going to show, so... Whoops, we're kind of going crooked there. I bet you won't even notice it. I'll bet not. Whoops, we might notice that one. It's sliding here. The ruler's catching it with the... With the I think that for this, I would probably not have my handy on. grip on it. Yeah. Okay. But so, so once you've got that one done, then I'm just going to cut my threads. And I have some scissors. Do you have them? I don't, but mm. I have fingers. Okay. So then once that's done, then we're going to just take this. We're going to flip it open and smooth it out nice, and then we'll just continue on adding our pieces. Okay, so you could do that with any, like the little candy corn that we showed, that's that same flip and stitch. Right. With the pumpkins that we had on the wall back in our fall, that was that flip and stitch, mm -hmm. and then just raw edge the top of it and yep. stitch it down. So there's so many things, pillows, so yeah. many things that we could do with that flip and stitch. But this is so fun with that ruler too. Well, and to have the different angle instead of just a straight table runner. So this is a 10 degree ruler. Yep. Okay. And so then the one thing with this, with the binding, because of the curves, <gasps> you want to do your binding on a bias. Okay, that's a good so idea. So that's a that's a good but idea. This was, but this was this was a fun, is. easy project too that we did with my girls, and they're not they're not sewers, but they all did one. So if I added so. more than the six, it would make, give it a, a bigger a, swing, yep. bigger fan, and then flip. So then you're going to put it on going the other direction, uh -huh. the narrow end. So the easiest thing for me to do was actually to lay them out. So I had six going this way, then six going this way. That's a smart. So that as I grabbed them, they mm -hmm. were the right direction. Uh, that's a good idea. So. And the same thing if you're doing like the candy corn is figure out how you want things. Of course, Candy corns always have that certain That's color right. going the right way. But what a fun idea. Well, thank you for joining us today. I hope there's something that you found today that will uh, that you'll just have to make and give as a gift or have for your own decorations for Christmas or for your fall decorations. So join us again next month for another idea. Mm -hmm.